Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, I was challenged to make some decor that would fit into a small bathroom with limited space, so I came up with this shelf ensemble. Now I wanted this piece to have multiple functions, but also be space conservative. Now this shelf features two floating shelves, a crate container, and a removable towel bar. Now I will also show you how to give those Dollar Tree signs a realistic wood grain look. Now for your convenience, I provided the list of supplies and tools that you make this project in the description box below. Now, I'm very excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say hello and welcome back to my fantastic subscribers and visitors to my channel. Now, if you are a new visitor to my channel today and love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's jump right into this project. Now for this project, we'll start with two signs from the Dollar Tree. We'll also use two floating shelves from the Dollar Tree. And we'll also be using two of these plant hanger brackets from the Dollar Tree. So we're going to grab our signs and first we're going to remove all of those tags and hangers from the signs. And then we're going to pop off those metal hearts and you can do this with a flathead screwdriver. And then we're just gonna remove all of that glue residue that was left behind. So now we're going to go ahead and sand the area where we removed those hearts and we wanna make sure the area is nice and smooth. So now we're gonna to prep to paint our boards and I will be using some white chalk paint to do this and this will act as a primer. So I'm just going to apply one a nice thick coat of that chalk paint to both boards and I want to let them dry thoroughly. And now that they're dry, we're going to go ahead and flip them over and adhere them together. Now, you could have done this before painting as well, but either way will work. Now I will be using this cut off uh, paint stick handles to adhere these together, but you can use craft sticks or any other flat stick of your choice. Now I'm going to apply some wood glue to each one of the paint stick pieces in the center of them. And then when I go to apply them, I'm going to use a bit of hot glue around it just to help with an instant grab. Now I'm going to apply one of those paint sticks at each end and then fill in the centers. Now I'll also be using some of these cut up craft sticks to fill in those gaps. Now when everything is applied, flip the piece over and grab those five gallon sticks. Now I had one spare hanging around so I only needed one pack, but if you don't you'll need to buy two packs because they come in packs of three. So you want to start laying them around the board to form a frame. And then I'm going to start taking the measurements on that short end and make a note of it and mine was about 12 inches. And then I'm going to lay one of those short sticks on each end and get the measurement in between those sticks and mine end up being about 16 and an eighth inch. So once you have all your measurements, take them out to cut them by hand or an electric saw. And now that all your pieces are cut, you wanna lay them out to test fit them to make sure you have a good fit. And mine look good. So just a note, if you don't have signs and wanna use real wood or any other sign, I'll put the fully assembled dimensions in the description box below. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take those paint sticks and I wanna cut, I wanna go ahead and paint them with chalk paint. Um, just to make sure you get those sides and the ends cause you want every area that is showing to be covered. Now once they're dry, you're gonna sit them to the side and we wanna grab the dried board. Now to make my wood grain technique, I will be using this brown and this black acrylic paint. Now in one container, you wanna mix equal parts water and brown paint and mix it well. 
And in another container, you want to mix the black and brown together and add equal parts of water. And mix that well as two. So for your brushes, you'll need like, I'm using this old frayed end brush. You want to make sure it has a frayed end. I'll also be using a regular nylon paintbrush. And I'll be using a, a detail brush. Now, shout out to Mark Dwarin for sharing this technique. He used this for his wood floors and they turned out gorgeous. I will link his video in the description box below. So we're gonna start by first applying that light brown color on one of the planks. And we would just wanna apply it right across the board um, very lightly. And then we wanna mix in some of that darker brown. And that darker brown will be along the edges because we wanna show that we're having separation between the planks. Even though there's lines already in the board, this it just adds a little bit of dimension and texture. And then we're gonna take that fray brush and we're gonna push it against the, the board all the way up and this will create some grain lines and a lot of detail. Now once you do that, you can add some more of the brown in and some of the other colors and you'll know that you'll recognize that adding these things will add a lot of dimension and texture because natural wood usually has a lot of different rivets and cuts and lines and if you take that frayed brush and twist it, you'll see you can start to make knots and things like that. So this is really, really good. I would definitely check out his tutorial. He gives some great, great tips. So now you want to go ahead and take this and you want to add any more detail you want. Just do it until your heart desires to make sure. And then every time you add something, you kind of want to brush it and blend it in because you want it to look as natural as possible. So then you want to go ahead and repeat this process for the entire board until it is complete and just embellish as little detail or as much detail as you like. So then I'm gonna go ahead and grab those paint sticks and I wanna do the same thing. Now, I know what you're thinking, why put a faux wood finish on real wood? Well, I want the pieces to match for this project, but feel free to leave them natural or stain them for contrast. It's all up to you and it's about making it your own. Now, as you can see, just adding these um, just randomly, this is super simple and I had so much fun doing it. And I'm so glad that I found Mark Dwarren's video and his demonstration helped tremendously. Now you wanna make sure you get those sides as well and the ends because some of those will be exposed in the project. And now that everything is put together, here is what it looks like finished. It turned out beautiful. So now that everything is dry, we can start assembling our shelf. So we wanna lay out the board and I'm gonna place those trim pieces around the edges. Now I will be using this wood glue and hot glue to adhere the pieces to the board. Now I wanna apply the wood glue and then hot glue just like we did the pieces on the back of our board. And then just start applying the pieces around the board as shown here. And now that everything is in place, we can move to the next step. So grab those shelves and the brackets. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove all the packaging and place those shelves on the board. We're just gonna kinda uh, place these things on the board to figure out where our placement and how we want it to look. Now we're gonna take our brackets and bend that bottom up. Now you can do this by hand with no extra tools and this is to hold that bar in place and it'll be very secure. And plus all the pieces fit snugly on the board. And we just wanna make sure everything is aligned and that you're satisfied with the look. Now, once everything is in place, 
um, we can take a tape measure and we're going to measure on one side where everything is and then we're going to mark it lightly with a pencil and then transfer those measurements to the other side now I'm marking the top of each shelf the first one at three inches and the second one at nine inches So now I'm just taking some painter's tape and I'm connecting those marks to make sure I have a straight line for mounting my shelf. So now I'm going to grab one of my shelves and I'm going to use a chalk marker just to mark where those metal pieces are on the back. And then I'm going to take a piece of painter's tape and I want to make it as long as the width of my board and I want to place it across the back of that shelf and transfer those marks where that metal piece is to the tape. And then I'm going to mark a safe drill area with a little O, like a little circle, and then um, this will tell me um, where my, cut, my holes can be drilled. So I'm going to take it off the back and I'm going to put it on the board and cut it to the exact width of my board and so when I flip the board over and put it on the back it'll be representing the same size and shape of my shelf piece and um, there won't be any questions so once I get the tape on there we want to make sure that three inch from the top is accurate and then I'm going to put a dot underneath that little circle I drew and that'll tell you that is my safe just safe zone and I'm just going to put my shelf on top of there just to make sure that I'm good to go And then I'm going to repeat this on the 9 inch area as well. So now I'm going to flip that board back over and I'm going to hot glue those shelves into place. Now this is just to provide a temporary hold until we can drill them and secure them in the back. Now once we put that hot glue on there, just press them firmly into place and repeat with the other shelf. So now I want to grab and unpackage those screws that came with those shelves. And we should have four screws and we're not going to need the anchors for this project. And then I'm going to flip that board over and I'm going to drill some pilot holes where the marks that we made. So I'm using a 332nd size drill bit. And then we can take all of our screws and we can add those to the shelves. And once those shelves are nice and secure in place, we can go ahead and remove that painter's tape. So now we can move on to adding our brackets. So I want to align the brackets to the bottom of the shelf and I want to transfer that lowest hole marking to the bottom of the shelf on both of the brackets. Now that those holes are marked, I'm going to take my drill and I am going to drill a pilot hole in each one of those markings. Now to make sure that my brackets stay nice and straight, I'm going to add some E6000 to the back of the bracket. And then I'm going to follow up with some hot glue for that instant hold. Then I'm going to press that bracket into place making sure those screw holes are aligned with the pilot holes. And then I'm going to take those screws that came with those brackets and a secure one into the bottom of the shelf on each side.
And what project wouldn't be complete if you're not using a toilet plunger? <laughs> so I'm going to take my toilet plunger end off and remove it. And I'm going to insert that rod into the bracket holder. And I'm going to mark a cut line about a half inch longer than each side. And then I'm just going to take it outside and cut it with a saw. So now that that's cut, I'm going to grab some scrap nautical rope. And I'm going to cut it off so I have a nice clean end to work with. And then I'm going to apply hot glue around the end of that rod and I want to wrap that nautical rope around it and I'm just going to trim it to fit. And then I'm just going to repeat this on the other side. So now that this is done, I am going to take this black acrylic paint and I will be painting the rod and the rope to match the shelf. And once you let this sit to dry, we could just add the rod through the holder and the rope ends will act as stoppers and keep the rod from falling out. Now to hang this piece, I'm going to use these picture frame holder pieces and nails that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to be adding these to a couple of paint stick handles to allow extra thickness of the wood for these nails. Now since these nails are only a half inch long and they're so small, I like to use my needle nose pliers to hold them while I nail them into place. So I'm going to apply one nail into each side of that holder into that piece so they'll be ready to go and apply on the back. And here are both pieces ready to apply to the back of the shelf. We're just going to flip that shelf over and we're going to place one of those brackets on each side on the top of the shelf. And then I'm going to place some scrap wood underneath or some other support under the shelf and I'm going to hammer those pieces into place. So now the last thing I'm going to do is to add a mini crate to the shelf above that towel holder. Now I'm going to take the crate and I'm going to be painting it with black acrylic paint and I want to make sure that I paint this on the inside and the out. Now all you would need for this crate is one nice coat. This acrylic paint is really well, even the Dollar Tree acrylic paint as well. Now you don't need to worry about painting the back since that will be adhered to the shelf. So once the crate is dry, we can go ahead and add it to the shelf. Now we want to measure um, where we want to place it before adding any adhesives so we don't have to do any adjusting once we place it down on the shelf. I'm just going to mark this line with a pencil and then I'm going to apply some E6000 to the back and I'm going to put it on all three slots of the crates and then I'm going to uh, grab my hot glue gun and um, this will give it some instant hold. Once everything is applied, just press it firmly into place. And then once this piece is dry, you are done with your shelf assembly. And now I have decorated my piece and here it is on display. I really love this cute little shelf. And now I've added a few sunflower themed decorations and towels to my piece and I really love this combination. I think these little floating shelves are so much fun and they're perfect for displaying your cute little decorations and trinkets you may have around the house. And this cute little towel bar is actually super sturdy and how handy is that little crate for holding extra towels? 
Now I'm really impressed with the wood grain tutorial to create this wood look and I think that it would, I will definitely be trying this again with more of my projects. Now I can see this in a kitchen or a bathroom for sure. Let me know in the comments how you would use this shelf in your home. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Craft DEE on Facebook for the latest new sneak peeks and giveaways. Thank you so much for visiting and checking out my tutorial today. If you like videos like these and don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below and turning on that notification bell. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.